35 killed in suicide bomb attack on school in Kabul, Afghanistan. On September 30th, at least 35 people were killed and more than 80 wounded at the Kaj Education Center in Kabul, Afghanistan by a suicide bomber. The Kaj Education Center is located in the largely in, in a largely Hazarashia neighborhood. According to a local journalist, Bilal Sawari, the number of dead is approximately 100. The Hazaras have been persecuted for centuries in Afghanistan, and the Taliban targeted them heavily during their formal rule in the 1990s. On the day of the attack, the students aged between 18 and 25 arrived early for a practice exam. According to Shafi Akbari, quote, first we heard gunshots at the main gate. Everyone was worried and tried to run in different directions. Soon after that, a huge explosion occurred inside the center. Although, uh, Zabi Zabiula Mujahid, a Taliban spokesperson, condemned the attack. The Taliban did not show sympathy the day after the attack when they beat and shot at demonstrators protesting against the violence against the Hazara Shias. As, uh, as of now, no group has claimed responsibility, but the involvement of uh, ISIS Khorasan was, is likely. And the Interior Ministry spokesperson man, uh, Abdul Nafi Thakur, said the police had arrested a suspect. The hashtag, hashtag stop Hazra genocide has been used over 6 million times as the global community calls attention to the ongoing targeted killings. So I thought, I mean, this is really important to cover for lots of reasons, but the call for the genocide against the Hazaras is something that has been ongoing and increasing and after this attack in particular, um, it's it's getting a lot more attention, the persecution that the Hazaras face. And so I, I really wanted to make sure that we cover that as well. Um, Armin, how would you explain kind of the Hazara situation for people that don't know the history? So Hazaras are uh, in Afghanistan, they're a Shia community. And for ISIS-K, ISIS Khorasan in um in Afghanistan will see them as a perfect target for questioning the legitimacy of the of Taliban, right? So if you consider the the difference between the Taliban and ISIS in Afghanistan, uh, the Taliban is considered very un-Islamic according to ISIS, right? First of all, uh, for many reasons, but most importantly because of their um, now non- not anti-Shia position, right? So when it comes to hardline Sunni Islam, uh, especially from the Wahhabis and anything that is influenced by um, maybe anything Ibn Taymiyyah related, remotely Ibn Taymiyyah connected, right? Uh, ideology. Um, and Shias and any other sects of Islam that are not the, the Sunni Islam, are not just non-Muslim, they're the most, how do I say this without making YouTube think that I'm saying it? Anyways, they're basically uh, the purest evil that you could find, right? Because they are not only just non-Muslim, they are taking Islam and they are changing it and also associating partners with Allah while doing so in the name of Islam. So they're taking the biggest sin in Islam and making it seem like it's a fist, doing that sin is Islam itself. Like there's nothing more vile in the eyes of these people, right? So for the Taliban, who is now in power, to go from attack, doing terrorist attacks on these kind of people, which are Shias, to now actually defending them because the Taliban it requires stability in Afghanistan, right? Um, so they can't just do terrorist attacks anymore. Um, so the, the in the eyes of a lot of the these ISIS members, um, Taliban has lost any le legitimacy to claim that they're even Muslim, right? They consider they were they were branded as ex-Muslim or murtads by ISIS members, right? And Taliban lost members. Um, there were Taliban members who left Taliban and joined ISIS K because of a lot of this, because of a lot of these disagreements and. Uh, it's not just this, it's a multiple of things. For example, having an agreement with the United States or even negotiating with them or sitting at the same table with them. 
Um, that is a very vile thing, according to ISIS-K, for the Taliban to do, right? Um, the ideology itself is fundamentally uh, different. Um, Taliban considers, is focused on a country, um, which is Afghanistan and Pakistan. Like these are countries that they recognize as existing and uh, Taliban Afghanistan considers itself to be the leader in Afghan of Afghanistan. Uh, ISIS-K considers the recognition of countries itself to be shirk, <laughs> right? The sin, right? So ISIS-K doesn't even recognize borders, right? It always only Wait, recognizes- Wait, what? Oh yeah. Wait, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. <nah. laughs> so Taliban Afghanistan believes in Afghanistan and this is our country, okay? And ISIS is like, you, you believe in countries now? Going a little bit shirky, aren't we? <laughs> You know, I like, mean, like, I've, yeah. you know, I used to be a border abolitionist. I know a lot of them. Okay. But <laughs> that is a level of border abolition that I have never encountered. <laughs> what? Yeah, no, uh, no, they don't recognize borders and countries, right? Or nationhood. Nation. Because the, it's the shark? Yeah, it's shark. And also the concept of a nation. They're, they're, you know, they're correct about the fact that the concept of a nation state is a worse, is a Western um idea right yeah. so anybody who anybody who believes in afghanistan as a country that means they believe in the concept of a nation state which is a european concept that came out of western europe in the age of enlightenment so they're like okay good job like oh if you say like oh my life for afghanistan they're like oh you're saying my life for this western concept you know like i will fight for afghanistan like ISIS K, like you would fight for Afghanistan, so you would fight for a nation, so you would fight for this Western ideal. That's what their understanding is, right? <laughs> right? They're only at your own saying that ISIS are globalists. <laughs> they are no Islam is globalist. I mean, technically. Yeah, no, but no. it's a funny way of thinking about it in comparison to how it's normally talked about. No, yeah, ISIS is globalist, but the, their version of globalism is everything, the entire globe will be under Islamic law. That is globalism. Well, it's not a, it's not just us liberals who are globalists, okay? <laughs> the the mm -hmm. Islamists are also liber, uh, globalists, but they you want to You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever um, known to mankind yeah. for free. Okay, Too so sexy that's, to show most and that's, Okay, so we by Muhammad, attacking Hindu, these sexy, Shias, Hidobi, art, Jesus, even Shia children Mary, apparently, Right? Japanese God, um, Greek God, they are showing, much, much signaling Click to on the people link below believe where it in them says, Get that they have not art. lost their way, that they are standing for what's right, and they're attacking what they're supposed to attack. They're reminding people that, look, Taliban is not willing to do what is Islamically proper. If you want real Islam, join. This is a, this, you see this as a terrorist attack. They see this as a marketing campaign. Yeah, I think um, there, and then, so according to the first initial reporting from this attack, there were 35 people killed. I saw other reporting from the Associated Press that say they confirmed about 52 actually, and a person on the ground said it was more like 100. So there's a lot of variation in exactly what the death toll was. And it's important to talk about how this happened at a school. This happened out of school for people sitting for exams and the explosion originated in the girls section of the school so not only is this you know against the hazara shias in general but it is also attack an attack on education and girls education in particular and um i think oh my gosh my brain just completely forgot what i was gonna say I'm sorry, give me a second. Oh, shoot. Oh, that, yes, I remember. Okay, so after this attack, this 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 main one that we're covering, there was a new attack three days ago. And this is significant because it was, a, the, the attack happened at a mosque inside the Taliban's own interior ministry. Wow. So there were yeah. four people that were killed and several others that were injured. And it actually happened 
inside of the ministry that is responsible for the security and law enforcement of the country. So again, this is emphasizing it, the, the, the inability, the complete and utter inability for the Taliban to institute any semblance of security and law enforcement. Yeah, this is also challenging the, their ability. Taliban is finding it very difficult. So this is like, a lot of people are like, oh, look, Taliban defeated the United States. OK, well, it's not that easy to maintain stability. OK, Taliban acted like they were so powerful to manage to get uh, to stop the United States from maintaining stability in the US. OK, but now that they have picked up that role, they're realizing that it's causing chaos is a lot easier than you know maintaining stability okay because isis k is a lot smaller than taliban okay but isis k is effectively challenging taliban in being able to maintain stability so you taliban you're not more powerful than united states you just have a lot when you were in charge of uh, causing chaos you just had a lot easier task now that the shoe is on the other foot you'll see that a, a group much smaller than you is basically doing to you what you were doing to the United States and you are incapable of maintaining stability in Afghanistan, right? This is interesting because now everyone is saying like um, Afghanistan is the graveyard of empires, right? And it, so now maybe Taliban is now also discovering this now that they're supposed to... Taliban is good at fighting. They're not good at maintaining or, or, or managing or governing or anything else other than like going boom, boom, right? So now, now that a lot of them actually now miss... Um, a lot of Taliban members are like, they, they don't like this role right now. They're like, some of them are uh, wishing that they could go back to war because they were more comfortable just fighting. Some of them were nervous because they thought that they're not going to become murderers. Like some, some of, some of their um, commanders were saying, like trying to calm them down by saying like, don't worry, there will be more wars and you get to die. If you like, don't worry, you, you will, oh you, there are more opportunities for you to become murderers. Um, is this a is this oh, picture God. the place that was bombed? I believe is this so. The crowd? This is the crowd that was bombed. Jesus Christ, that's a bad place. Oh my God. Maybe we shouldn't have crowds in Afghanistan. Maybe like especially if you're a Hazari, maybe you don't don't have mass crowds. I mean, this is actually their classroom, so they don't have any choice. Um, I think. The, I mean, but where are the, these are the what students? are you supposed to do? They have to I congregate that's in what I said. neighborhoods that's what I said. in certain neighborhoods because. They have to self-segregate basically because they're so persecuted. And yeah. do you remember two years ago, ISIS K stormed a maternity hospital and started shooting yeah. up Hazara Shia babies and mothers? Babies. Yeah. Yeah, that was like so this isn't anything new. And I don't know. I think this situation it made me think about how in terms of what's happening in iran the power of the iranian diaspora is a large factor in why we're seeing success around the uprising in iran getting attention because the diaspora has been in other countries for many decades long enough to one get into roles of media celebrity um, more high profile situations. They're also large enough and active enough within their local communities to be able to organize and start calling on, you know, foreign media, local politicians to get attention on this issue. And so I don't know if the larger Afghan and specifically Hazara diaspora is large enough to garner that kind of organized response to get it to a level that will actually see something happen do you understand yeah. what i'm saying this has gotten a very large response like the stop hazard genocide got like six million that hashtag got like six million you know posts or whatever so we are seeing it more than before okay good well thank you for covering this Susanna, so that we we could help a bit with that um by the way this is a oxymoron so this was a school of girls right so yeah. oxymoron yeah oxymoron is asking is the taliban still letting girls study no but there are private schools that are still in operation 
So this was one of the situations where it was a private school that was still somehow operating that got attacked. There's also secret schools. Did you yeah. know that? Underground schools. Like you show, you show, like, you know how you, <laughs> it's like, it looks like a drug deal. Like girls like hide their books. They act like they're going shopping and then they go and they're like, there's a teacher in the, in the basement and they're like learning lessons. Like it's crazy. It's crazy where you're like, like getting educated illegally. God damn it. Like yeah, that is, is crazy. That Ideas is crazy. Beyond Borders is doing a lot of amazing work to help fund the basically underground railroad of women's education in Afghanistan. So go check out their work. Um, giving a lot of materials in Dari. I think it's really cool. Yeah. Um, is this video watchable? What is this? Can I can we watch this or is this like no? Uh, I don't remember. So it's probably better not to. Not to because it could, it could just get in case. Trouble. Okay. Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.